praise, honor, and glory to the one who created the heavens and the earth. Come, let us shout for joy to the Lord, you all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us. We are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. I greet you all in the name of the one who is triumphant, even as he approaches Jerusalem, the Lord Jesus Christ. I bring warm uh, brotherly greetings from the St. Luke Methodist Church in Wilro Park. Our focus for prayer on the eighth day of effective lockdown is church leaders. You will remember that yesterday we prayed for the leaders of all nations and all those who are in authority. Today I want us to zoom into church leadership. Yes, I mean church leadership, the conscience of society. Let us then read from the letter to the Hebrews chapter 13, verse 17, and it reads as follows. Obey your leaders and submit to them, for they keep watch over your souls as those who will give an account. Let them do this with joy and not with grief, for this would be unprofitable for you. This is the word of God for the people of God. My friends, brothers and sisters, situations like the one we find ourselves in requires leadership. True leadership, and particularly Christian leadership, is not for the faint-hearted. The challenge with Christian leadership is that one does not have the option to choose your style of leadership. With Christian leadership, the choice of style you are bound to follow is predetermined by the head of the church, that is Jesus Christ himself. So true leaders usually emerge during crisis situations, and there they provide leadership, they provide guidance, but they also give direction. It doesn't come as a surprise then that having focused on general and generic leadership yesterday, then we can today narrow it down to church leadership. There are three, three things I wish to highlight from the text we have just read. Firstly, the aim of leadership in the church. Secondly, the means of leadership. Lastly, the response of leadership. There's also two phrases um, which I think are very important um, in the texts we have just read here. The first one is, that would be unprofitable for you. This means the aim of leadership is the profit of people, that they would be benefited. The other phrase is, keep watch over your souls, which means that the benefit that matters most to the leaders in the church should be the benefit of the soul. I want to contend, my friend, that we, the church, exist to save souls of God's people. Not just to get people converted to Christ, but to help you persevere up to the end. You know, endurance is not icing on the cake of saving faith. It is proof that your faith is real. Therefore, every message is a salvation message. Every small group in the church is a salvation small group. Every class is a salvation class. Every grace group, every cell is a salvation group. So your perseverance is the main concern of the church because your soul hangs on it. That is the main aim of leadership. The profit of your soul, namely its eternal salvation through persevering faith. Two, the means of leadership. How are the leaders to lead so that Christians persevere in faith and are saved? Firstly, 
its watchfulness. In the words of the text, they keep watch over our souls. Lead us, my friends, keep watch over your soul or for the sake of your soul. And this is how they do it. They watch the word of God. They watch the conduct of Christians. They are vigilant to be biblical. They are Christian-centered, morally exemplary, and caring for the people of God. With regards to joyfulness of leaders, leaders need to be joyful in their leading. Bible says, let them do this with joy and not with grief, for this would be unprofitable for you. The profitableness of spiritual leadership for the people of God comes through the leader's joy. A leader who is indifferent to his joy in God is also indifferent to the benefit of his people. If we do our work begrudgingly and with complaining and groaning and sadness, this will be unprofitable for you. It takes work to maintain joy in God. It is so important that even people who are commanded to help those who are in leadership should help do the work with joy. Let them do this with joy and not with grief, for this would be unprofitable for you. This is what constitutes leadership in the Church of Christ. So it becomes important that we obey our church leadership. We submit to them, for they keep watch over our souls. These are the people who have an obligation to and who are going to give account of our lives. Let's pray for them to ensure that they do their work of leadership with joy and not with grief. For if they are grieving, that would be unprofitable for you. And may the Lord bless you then as you begin to understand that it is so important that we pray for our church leaders. For these people need to account for our souls. Blessings to you. Come, let us pray. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for an opportunity to to pray for our leaders but i also want to thank you for those men and women boys and girls who have offered themselves to participate in your work as leaders give them your grace and shower them with your blessing give them the wisdom that they would require to lead your church this we ask in the wonderful name of our lord and savior jesus christ Amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forever. Amen. Thank you. Blessings to you.